Chad, thanks for joining us on the Ever Black Podcast. How, how's things going, mate? Things are going at hyperspeed, mate. I don't know, last year was sort of the, the sophomore, I suppose you'd call it, year for the band, and um, it just ramped up, and then it, it just sort of hit hyperspeed towards the end of last year, and it's not looking any like it's going to slide anytime soon, but a heap of shows already, books and decent ones um, coming up. We commence, well, we go back in the studio at the end of this month to um, start tracking for our EP, which we're sort of planning to have out um, around April, late April, early May, um, but with the amount of shows we've got in between and some other bits and pieces, it's going to make it extremely hard and sort of stretch out the recording process, but um, yeah, our producer's really cool, he's fully aware of it, and yeah, we're, we're really keen to make it happen. Released a couple of songs last year, they, they gained some really good attention, so we're really, really pumped to get some more music out and you know, get some people hearing our, our tunes. Of course, we are talking about your band, uh, From Crisis to Collapse. And, uh, I mean, the year is already planning out to be a really kick-ass year for you guys. I mean, uh, you've got a couple of supports in uh, in the works, like In Hearts Wake and, uh, is it uh, Lich King? You play Lich King? Yeah, Lich King, they're coming through. Um, they're doing a massive tour, US thrash band. Um, it seems like they've buddied up with a an Adelaide thrash band called Hidden Intent and um, you do all the research and they've sort of, I think they toured Europe together and they toured the States together and now Lich King, I do believe, are here now or very soon um, and they're doing a big Australian New Zealand tour with Hidden Intent and yeah, they're, um, they're doing some regional areas, they're doing Lismore down near where we are, um, the New Castles Hotel on the 15th of February, so us and that good mate Beast Machine, another sort of local thrash band uh, supporting them, so we're really hoping to to pull a good crowd and, and just show them, you know, what the the North Coast can can achieve. And then, um, yeah, you know, they, they're playing Miami Shark Bar, playing the back room in Brizzy, um, yeah, moving the way up the coast, and they go New Zealand. So got that, yeah, fifteenth of Feb, and then we picked up, you know, probably what's going to be the biggest show, like all heavy alternate show of the year in Byron, which is us playing with In Hearts Wake on uh, March three. Uh, you know, you go up in the North Coast, you go watch heaps of bands at the, the Great Northern Backroom, and it's just a, an all-time, purpose-built live music facility, and you dream of playing there, and, um, you know, we're living our dream band playing at a dream venue, so we're really, really excited about smashing that one to pieces on the 3rd of March. Of course, uh, you know, there's, there's some pretty killer shows you have coming up, but uh, last year was pretty big, as you mentioned before, and uh, you, it looked like you'd kick things right off with the support. What was that support? It was... Um... Uh, a bad in time, mate. So they're, mm. they're like an um, Irish... Like, they've been around for a long time, but sort of stalwarts of sort of thrashy, thrashy music. And, um, yeah, it kicked off the year with that. That was the first... That was the debut gig, and that was actually at Lismore as well. Um, bit of a story. I sort of... I was in another band at the time, um, a band called Collision, and, and you know, we're gigging around here and in Brizzy and stuff. And then um, I was sort of reaching out to some other bands, and, th- and this one we're looking, from across this club, we're looking for another guitarist to finish the lineup. And I've been in contact with the guys, and we're hoping to jam and sort of come together well before that gig um, in March, but it just didn't happen for various reasons, so... I was in contact with the band, hadn't actually played any, um, done any jams with them, but, you know, I had their material and stuff. I missed out on that gig, and I think, uh, like a week later, I jammed with them, and um, and then about three weeks later, we played our first gig of the Five Piece in Byron. Um, so, yeah, things just moved, and that was really indicative of the band. Things moved really, really quick. Um, but, yeah, it was fun. So, you know, the band... It was, it was sort of set for greatness, you know. It picked up a good gig for its first gig. Um, and it's just, I think it's got the good. There's, there's some sort of chemical chemical amongst the band. It just explodes. People love it. Um, we love it. It's a good mix, a good vibe. It's really enjoyable. So, um, yeah, really positive. That's awesome, man. That's I mean, that's what's uh, really important about <laughs> being in a band is that chemistry because if that's not there, uh, you know. You know what it's like being a muso, um, uh, getting sort of four or five dudes together at any one time is really hard logistically and 
whatever, you know, there's personalities and stuff involved. And this time around, it just honestly feels different. We've um, we've all been in bands before. We've been in bands that we weren't happy with. We've been in bands that sort of felt like work. And uh, we're consciously making the effort to make sure this doesn't feel like work, you know. And, um, yeah, we, we are totally connected on this and... That's what it's all about, of course. And, uh, you know, you did uh, send through uh, two killer tracks. And uh, I really dig what you guys are doing, of course, man. And uh, you you mentioned before you were recording a new one soon. Were you in yeah. the midst of it? Yeah, thanks, man. Yeah, we um, we recorded and released Crisis and Dimitri, um, two of our sort of older tracks. We recorded and released those last year. We recorded them at Top Station Studios in Brisbane with Chris Ross, who... Um, mm-hmm. Also sings for Cold Creature, um, but he's a metalhead, man. And um, we we actually were lined up to record somewhere else. And then the timings weren't working. And then I just remembered Chris and went, well, I'll reach out to Chris and see if he's available to him, you know, was fitting our schedule. And he was. And, um, you know, we'd played a gig with them once before. Actually, not, yeah, we'd played a gig with them once before. He's aware of our band. And then I sent him the demos and he just went, yeah, can't wait to work with you guys. Let's make it happen. And um, yeah, so we popped out Crisis and uh, Dimitri. I think we started in like uh, September last year recording. Uh, we were able to release Crisis in November. Um, and it's, we know, it was stoked. We had that premiere on, um, on Triple J, um, The Racket, which was, we're stoked about. And then, um, yeah, about a month later, we released Dimitri again at premiere on Triple J. and. You know, both those songs have had some frequent airplay um, across the country, some online stations and some other, you know, community radio and some things in uh, South Australia and North Queensland. And, um, yeah, so they're really stoked. It's drawn some really good attention and we're super, super proud of them, you know. So we're going back to Chris. Uh, we start on the 22nd of January, so we'll go up there and play the drum tracks. He's going to do a few little things different this time, um, you know, just from a learning process. Yeah, once we pumped out throughout the process, actually, before we even finished them with Crisis and Dimitri, he was nodding his head saying, yeah, man, this is the, this is the best work I've done. <laughs> and so that's always really positive when you're the artist. And then, um, you know, the whole way through, he's like, oh, next time I might mix the drums more before we lay the strings over and stuff like that. So a couple of different techniques getting used this time. But, yeah, 22nd, we go up there, lay the drums down. Um, hopefully find some time in between these upcoming shows to smash out the strings and the vocals. But, um, you know, it'd be nice to have a release by March for the um, In Hearts Wake gig, but it's just not realistic. So we're sort of thinking April, April, May. And um, we're hoping to have, a, you know, a six-track EP finished by then. So Crisis and Dimitri will go on that EP and we've got another four to... Or fully, you know, pre-produced and ready to go. So we're aiming to get another four down. Awesome, man. Awesome. Well, uh, man, if you're you, you and the guys are cool with it, I'll uh, chuck Dimitri in now to the podcast. So uh, anyone that's listening to this can check it out. We are down with that, man. Go for it. <laughs> cool.
so give us a little bit of a, a backstory on that one. Like, what's the story behind Dimitri? Oh, uh, you know, um, I'll give you the backstory. You know, we come from a fairly alternate place in Australia, and people experiment with certain things and chemicals and all this sort of stuff. And, um, you know, uh, Dimitri is a bit of a code word for an hallucinogenic called DMT. So, um, yeah, it's just sort of talks about people's experiences and stuff like that on Dimitri. Um, that's the sort of subject matter. And then the the music is just brutality. <laughs> that's what we're looking for. Uh, intensity, brutality, um, and just high energy. And I think we achieved it. You know, that that's the core, the, the verse groove, you know, like every time we play that song live, you just look across the stage and you see the guys in the band just bumping around jump ballistic, you see people in the crowd just banging their head. Um, yeah, I think we've got a review done on it from um, Overdrive Music Mag, and one of the quotes he said was uh, about Dimitri, he said, when that, verse, when that verse kicks in, no matter what you're doing, you're driving your car and walking down the street, you just start banging your head. And it's true, you know, <laughs> like, we, we just love it, it's got the groove. Going back to it, I mean, you were talking about how you know, you're in different bands and stuff like that. You're all from different parts of the world. But, I mean, what was it that really kicked things off for you guys? Um, I think what kicked it off for us was, um, you know, once the lineup was finished, once I sort of moved in, um, we all sort of felt comfortable and we could, could move forward with the song. So the guys, like the, the other four had a, quite a few songs already pretty well hammered out. Um, and once the sort of the last person comes in, it felt like the family was together. It was Christmas dinner. Um, we could just talk honestly about the songs, made some few minor changes and suggestions and really take things on board. Um, but then we got hungry for gigs. And, you know, myself, I, I reach out a lot to other bands and, and you know, managers and people in the industry and just introduce ourselves and just try and get people to hear our music. And I think that's, that's created a lot of opportunity for us. And, um, you know, we played the first gig and we just, after it, we're having a beer at the show and we're like, that felt right. Yeah, that did feel right. And then it was just, dang, let's get another gig. And then we're getting approached to play gigs. And, you know, I think, like, the first gig was in March as a five piece. First gig was in April. And then I think between April and February, we, um, sorry, Gen- December, where I'm still struggling from Christmas break, but um, <laughs> between uh, March and December, we hammered out something like 12 or 13 gigs, um, so really put in some effort, and you know, we got offered probably another six or seven, we, we could have done 20 shows last year, but just for scheduling reasons or whatever, we couldn't make those other gigs, but yeah, you know, like it, it was a really intense year, and you know, and in between, um, you squeeze in your day job, and in between, you, you're squeezing in the... Um, the recording, and also doing the publicity and stuff like that for it. So, yeah, it's really intense. Awesome, man. And, uh, of course, uh, what would be your dream support? What's, what's that well, number one that you're chasing? Oh, you know, like, Australia-wise, you know, we would love to be supporting our, you know, some, some mates in Parkway Drive or Die Art is Murder, something like that. That would be, that would be sick. Um, you know, King Parrot. Uh, you know, it'd be, it'd be cool to, to sort of be supporting those sort of bands internationally. Oh, you know, like, if Revocation or Lamb of God were coming back through, um, Black Dahlia Murder, that would just be off the hook. <laughs> so, <laughs> if anyone from Black Dahlia or Revocation is out there and listening, please give us a call or drop us an email. <laughs> free and willing. Why not both? That's it, exactly. That'd be cool. Yeah. Imagine that, that one one uh, tour. Oh, you know, like, you know, you saw these festival lineups across Europe and states and stuff, and the caliber of bands you're seeing, it just it blows my mind. Um, yeah, you got Download coming to Australia in, is it March, I think? Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, there's a lot of good bands on that, but it's a, it's a small version compared to what you're seeing happening in Mexico and the states and Europe. Um, yeah, it's just some bangers out there, you know. And like Parkway has tucked into it. Parkway Drive are on those bills. They're, they're headlining a lot of them. They are murdering it. Um, they're just doing so good. And deservedly so. Talented band, killer songs, and just hard workers, man. You know, um, 
remember those guys playing at high schools and community halls and stuff like that when I was starting, and they played every gig they could get. They played every tour they could jump on, and the rooms just kept getting bigger and more full. Good for them. Oh, absolutely, man. I remember booking them uh, over 10 years ago yep. <laughs> for, like, uh, the uh, the local sort of halls up here on the uh, on the Gold Coast, and look at them now. It's like River Stage and stuff. It's... Exactly, exactly. Um, you know, I remember those gigs as well, Byron Bay High School and all the other bits and pieces around here, and there's been a time when the, on the North Coast the scene wasn't great. Um it used, to be, it used to thrive. It used to thrive mm. in like the, the mid-90s, early 2000s, and then um, sort of died off for a few years. Um, well, sort of towards the early 2000s died off, and then Parkway came back up and sort of reinvigorated it and sort of put Byron back on the map. And then, you know, and then following on, you've got the, the juggernauts in Inhart's Wake as well, absolutely killing it and pumping out some incredible music. So um, it's good, you know. Um, you know... At our jam space, there's not too many jam space opportunities in Byron, so there's only a couple, and quite often you, you sort of, you, you're playing your set or whatever, smashing up some tunes, and then you go out the front to crack a beer and, you know, have a chat and get some fresh air, and people come out of the next room and like, we thought Parkway were in the next room. <laughs> <laughs> That's what happens when you get double kicks blasting and um, some heavy distorted guitars off the page and some screamo vocals. <laughs> That's awesome, dude. That's awesome. And, uh, of course, it sounds like you've got a big year ahead. You know, uh, you get planned on uh, hitting the road? I think so. Like, um, we sort of, us and another local band had preliminarily planned an East Coast, like a mini East Coast tour last year, which um, fell over for scheduling issues, um, probably for the best anyway. It allowed us to record um, a bit, you know, a bit better and gave us a bit more time to work some things out. But, um, yeah, like we're, we're we've definitely got some some hopes to travel Australia this year. Um, nothing is planned yet, but we're certainly keeping our eye out for opportunity. Um, you know, Sydney, Newcastle, Canberra is most definitely going to be on the cards. Um, you know, we're in talks with some play with some sick Melbourne bands. There's a band called Toxicon we played with last year. Um, they're really keen to get us down there. Um, April from Melbourne as well, really keen to play with us. Um, you know, I've been talking to some of the guys out uh, in Extremis from Adelaide. You know, we want to try to hook up with them as well. So, um, yeah, like it, it's going to happen this year. We'll definitely, we will be getting around Australia and people will be seeing from crisis to collapse for sure. That's awesome to hear, dude. Well, uh, man, thanks for uh, taking the time to chat to us again, man. And I'll uh, probably be seeing you at a gig real soon up this way. and. Keep in touch and let us know what's happening, man. Most definitely, man. We've got the crowbar on the, uh, what is it, next Thursday, the 18th, and then we're playing the cool and get a hotel and a bunch of sick bands like Dead Yet and, um, you know, Level H from the Gold Coast, Beast and from down here, Cold Creature. So that's on, uh, February 2th. It's a Friday night. So come on down, Nerv. I'll set you a beer. Yeah, awesome, man. I'll see you then. Sick, brother. Thanks, mate.